Hello everyone. Welcome back to my online channel, The Palm Leaf. Uh, this is video number 17. We are going to look at something very interesting today. In a normal dot plot, what we usually see is uh, if there is a situation where you have got the same values, the dot plot hides that information, which means, uh, let's say there are three or four dots and it is on the same X and Y uh, point, um, you will have a single dot instead of four or three or four dots, right? So what happens is when you take the visual uh, holistically, you will feel that some of the data is not represented accurately. In order to address this problem or solve for the situation, um, in our in the ggplot package, we've got something called as geom jitter. Now it is a very uh, useful shortcut or a very convenient shortcut as the help page uh, help page uh, shows you. And I've just opened it up for your uh, for your reference. Uh, instead of using the position is equal to jitter option inside geom point, you can simply say geom underscore jitter and then uh, replace it with the geom point. Uh, uh, plot right so i'll just read it out uh, so that you can understand it uh, slightly more better so what does geom jitter does it adds a small amount of random variation to the location of each point and what do you mean by location of each point wherever your x and y uh, variables meet right wherever your observations are placed inside that grid uh, if they overlap it will what what geom jitter will do is it will try and show two dots or three dots uh, as many as many observations that you have instead of a single overlapping point. So you can have all the three points overlapping on the same place. Instead of that, it will just spread it out for you, right? It's a useful way of handling over plotting caused by discreteness uh, in smaller data set. And uh, we'll just try and understand what that means. Uh, let's get uh, to the action. So we are going to use the MPG data set, which was one of the data set that we are we were using in the previous video. Uh, let me just quickly show you how the MPG data set is. It's a quick recap of uh, what we want to do here. So you will get a lot of car manufacturers, their model types, um, uh, year of launch, number of cylinders, so on and so forth. Um, and if we are, if you if you if you go by the normal syntax, it's like a ggplot. You're calling MPG as a data set, and inside the aesthetic syntax, you're just going to write x is equal to cylinder and y is equal to uh, highway miles per gallon, right? And you're going to pass this on to a, uh, a vector variable called as g. Uh, let me just run it. So our plot is now stored in g, and when we do a g plus g on point, uh, this is what we get. Right now, let me just uh, quickly uh, explain this to you. What is happening here? Uh, you've got five discrete type of cylinders. You've got four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right? There's nothing in uh, nothing in seven that we see here. But uh, and this is plotted against highway miles per gallon. And what do we see here? We see that most cylinders, uh, most cars have got four cylinders, and they have got a, a slightly wider range of uh, uh, highways. Now, what we are not sure about is in the mpg data set has got 234 different rows but you don't see 234 different dots here so what is happening something is something is missed right so uh, what might be happening is you you can get multiple car models with the same uh, cylinders and let's say the same mileage so let's say uh, yeah, if you if you look at the inter uh, intersection between uh, x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 30 you see a dot there right maybe this is not the thing that there's not just one model that's there right there can be 15 15 or 20 different models which have that uh, which have that interaction now how do you i mean if, when you draw a simple dot plot uh, that information is hidden you don't see 234 different observations here. To solve for this, what we have is the geom jitter, right? The moment you do that, what you can see here is suddenly you see 232 different observations. And what is happening? The same uh, in intersection that we were earlier talking about, right? Wherever you see four cylinders and wherever you see 30 miles per gallon, now suddenly you can see a lot of points here. So what has happened? Instead of overlapping all those dots, it has slightly moved uh, those dots away from each other, right? So that's, that's how you can actually have a fair idea as to the number of, uh, so here your, your observations are adequately represented right so that's the beauty of uh, that's the beauty of geom uh, geom jitter now let's slightly play around with the size the width uh, and then uh, we'll also end up completing uh, completing having a look at uh, the color right so what have we done here here we have artificially said that the width of the jitter 
should be smaller so we are giving it 0.25 because we don't really want it to be spread far wide uh, we just want to see how the jitter is so we are going to give it a smaller value like 0. Uh, 0.25 if you just compare it with the previous jitter you can see that if you don't give any value uh, it is slightly more spread out but if you want it to be slightly uh, strung together then you can give a smaller value Similarly, you can give a height. So width and height are two elements that you can give to control the spread of how uh, the jitter happens, right? Uh, now, last but not least, let's uh, let's add some color also, right? So what what is happening here? I mean, all that you're trying to do is you're going to color code it based on the class, based on the type of uh, type of car it is. So SUVs will have that brown color. You'll have blue color for mid-size cars, uh, pink color for compact cars, uh, and slightly darker pink for pickup cars, so on and so forth. So uh, I hope uh, you can you can use Geom Jitter very quickly and conveniently uh, to have a quick understanding of all the observations in your data set along with how along with uh, spreading out of overlapping uh, overlapping points thank you very much for watching uh, hope this was uh, this was okay um, uh, let's let's see you in the next video thank you